Hey, everybody, it's Tommy Canale, and welcome back to Before the Lights podcast, the show to find out how those in sports, music, and entertainment made their mark. Get your coffee or grab a drink and get ready because she is back. The country sensation with a southern smooth voice that just released a fun, good feeling, easy listening, put a smile on your face EP called Heartbreaker. The one and only Whitney Duncan. Whitney, welcome back to the show. What a heck of a, an entrance there. I love it. <laughs> How the heck are you now? I'm good. I'm good. I'm just still, you know, just released that EP last Friday. So it hasn't even been a whole week yet. And I'm just still uh, coming down from the high of releasing new music. It's just so exciting. This last week's been awesome. Getting a great response and just every day there's something else that comes up. And I'm like, yes, you know, good stuff. So it's very well done. I, I, I've listened to it multiple times. It's your first EP in almost a decade. So what made you say, let's do this again? You know, it really was, it was a song. It was the right people involved. Um, Cause I had been um, a ba- in a band during that, those 10 years of, of not doing the solo thing. Um, I'd been in a band, I'd taken off, done reality TV. Um, just, you know, a lot had changed in these 10 years. And uh, it was really the song Lightweight on the EP that we I had written years ago with my friend, now producer, Michael Carter. Um, some of y'all might know Michael Carter. He is Luke Bryan's band leader, also produces Cole Swindell, um, and wrote One Margarita, multiple, many, many hits as a songwriter. And he went back in on Lightweight and decided to kind of remix it to pitch to some other solo female artists. And it was kind of that weird place in my life where I was like, I don't know what's happening with the band. We really can't seem to get anything going. We couldn't figure out our management situation. And it just, things were just not lining up you know? Mm -hmm. And so I was kind of in a place where like, I don't know what my next steps are. I had put all my eggs in this basket and I didn't, I kind of didn't know what to do. And I'm like, just praying. It's like, I'll figure out the next steps and what that's going to look like. And I had literally that same week, several people that said something to me about like, Hey, have you thought about doing another solo project? And I'm like, no, I have not because <laughs> I've been there, done that. And I, those doors have been slammed in my face. And I just, you know, it would take the right music to get me excited about doing that again. And that's what happened. I went in the studio. He's like, you got to come in. You got to hear the song. I heard Lightweight. And I'm like, well, okay, I guess we're doing this. And he, uh, he's like, are you cool if I play it for a potential manager? And I'm like, yeah, because here's the deal. If I can't get the right team, there's no point to making music if nobody hears it. And if I can't have the right team, then I know nobody's going to hear it because that's how this town works. Um, Nashville is a very different, you know, there's so many talented people here, you know, making music, but like, unless it, it gets to the masses, doesn't mm-hmm. matter. How long then has this EP been in the works? It's been a couple years now. We started having these conversations in um, actually fall of 2018, started the, the conversations about it. Um, I worked on it in 2019 um, and was still finishing up at the beginning of, of 2020. So beginning of 2020 is when we kind of got all the mixes pretty close to done. The masters hadn't been done, but, uh, that's when we kind of rolled out the project. First release was February of 2020 homesick when right before we all got, you know, shut down and, um, and then kind of rolled that out through 2020. And then finally with all the songs and this week, did you write any of these songs yourself? Uh, yeah, we, I wrote, I was a co-writer on damn, I do lightweight and all she wants. And then heartbreaker, and uh, Homesick were both outside songs. And that's the first time I've really cut outside songs, but they just spoke to me and I 
said everything the way I would have wanted to say it had I written the song. And I thought they just really rounded out the project really nicely and um, just fell in love with those songs. So I thought they had to be part of the part of the EP. What does Heartbreaker mean to you? So Heartbreaker, when I first heard it, I think you can kind of interpret it two different ways. Um, So when I heard it, first listen, you think like it's a little dangerous. You think it's about a bad boy, but it's really not. Like I listened to it on second listen. I'm like, well, this is exactly how I felt when I met my husband. Like it's just that feeling of like, you could break my heart. Like you have that potential because... I'm crazy about you. You know, I'm in this. I can't help it. You know, like I have to take this, you know, leap of faith and knowing that you're probably going to break my heart. And I mean, even my husband, it all obviously all worked out and we're married, but like, I know he still has that potential for the rest of my life. And so that's how I interpret it as a happily married woman. I know there's a lot of females out there that can interpret it. And like, you know, just making a bad decision, jumping into something when you know it's not going to turn out and it can be interpreted that way, too. Um, So I just like to kind of leave it up to whatever is going on, you know, in other people's lives and how they want to look at it. But that's how I interpret it, interpreted it. And um, and also the music videos come out in a few weeks and you'll see how that goes. Awesome. How much blood, sweat and tears do you have poured into this EP? Years. I mean, truly years. And um, it's just from being on the fence and and really kind of scared to do a solo project again. And then many, many months of praying about it, thinking about it, listening to songs, writing songs. I mean, it just was I had spent so many years um you know, doing a a band project and, and not just thinking about myself, but thinking about other people. So this project was getting back to me, like, who am I now as a grown woman? I hadn't recorded music, solo music in many years. So obviously what I would say now is completely different than what I would say in my early twenties. I'm a whole different person. So it was just a lot of mental, you know, thinking about it and just kind of stressing about it, honestly. (laughs) So yeah, just a lot. So it feels really like a big weight off my shoulders and relief that it's out now. And now it can just do what it's supposed to do. Let's talk about homesick. It's got a little rock to it. The lyrics include taking a bubble bath, putting your feet up, got a glass of rosé from our last conversation. Is some of this about you? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I didn't write that song, but when I heard it, I was like, this is so me. I have to like, anybody that knows me knows I love a good, long, hot bath and bubble bath. Like it's every night. (laughs) So um, no rosé, it's dry January. But um, yeah, I mean, that song was so me. And like I said, before, before the shutdown, I'm a happily married woman that, yeah, like some days would be like, I wish we just didn't have to go to work. Like, I wish we just had the day together. And you have those feelings of like, don't go. And now it's completely different. Like now it's like, please go to work. (laughs) (laughs) Please. Can you just go to work? (laughs) Get out of the house. You know, it's sick of being home now, but it completely, completely changed from when I first listened to that song for sure. All she wants is an upbeat, it's kind of like turn it up song, ladies, get on my back and here we go. Yeah. Where did the yeah. inspiration come from? That was, uh, we really wrote that song specifically for this project because I felt like that's what this project was missing. That really fun, up-tempo, super fun to play live. You could play it in the bar, get the girls up to dance, like that kind of fun female kind of anthem. And those were hard to write really hard to write like nobody understands like that's one of the hardest songs to write while not being cheesy so I feel like we did it you know I kind of wanted it mixed with a little bit of 90s country female where like it kind of used to tell a story also mixed with fun almost Shania-esque feel Mm -hmm. that was what we were going for and I think I think we did it you did you know I but it's really that song 
those people don't understand. Those are the hardest songs to write. A heartfelt ballad is the easiest song to write. Funny enough. I would not have guessed that. So I'm glad you brought that up. Damn, I do. Really solid song. It's got a kind of pop to it. Almost like she just can't get away from him. Mm -hmm. Talk about that song. Yeah. You know, obviously when I wrote that song, it was not something I was going through at the time. We uh, wrote it with a couple other girlfriends of mine and Michael Carter as well, but it's, it's somewhere I had been before. And in writing a song, you know, you have to use your imagination a little bit because not every line is going to pertain to you and your perspective. Um, but you know, a lot of people have been there and you've been there at some point. So that's kind of where I put myself, I had been in one of those kind of things, you know, many, many, many years ago. Um, and the girls I were writing with were definitely struggling with that at the time. It's like, you, you don't want this person, but you do, you know, and you hate yourself for wanting them, but that kind of, that kind of feeling. So, and then going somewhere and seeing them out. Um, I mean, Nashville's a, a small, big city. So you run into people. I listened to the EP several times and it, for me, I wanted more songs, Whitney. I was like, I want more songs. Well, hopefully there'll be, uh, there'll be more in 2021 for sure. Got, I've got a lot of them. It just, um, it felt right to go ahead and put this body of work out before, you know, um, moving on to the next. So, so we're going to keep going in the music business. Yes, that's the plan. <laughs> awesome. What is immediate future then for you? I know there's a lot of shutdowns. Are you going to try and do anything virtually? Or are, you gonna, are you performing anywhere? Uh, no performances on the books. I mean, obviously, social media is still, you know, happening and a great way to get your music out there. And um, kind of what a lot of new artists are having to lean on right now is social media aspect and things like this, you know, that get your name out there, get you heard. And, um, so no performances so far, we'll see what 2021 brings, but I mean, I'm really honing back in on the songwriting right now. I just signed a new publishing deal with Sony and, um, so yeah, just really focusing on the creative, creative process for these next few months, writing songs for me, writing songs for other people, trying to get back in the studio and seeing, you know, what comes out this year. Well, congrats on the EP. Much success in 2021 with whatever you do. It is, it's very well done. And thanks for taking time out of your running around day and jumping yeah. on the show. <laughs> you got me all natural today. I'm not made up. It's, it's one of those run around grocery shop, you know, hit the post office, take back some Christmas presents kind of day. <laughs> Go to the website before the lights and I'll have show notes and a link to heartbreaker there. You can follow us on Instagram at before the lights podcast. Join us on Patreon. Become members of the BTL crew. Go to patreon.com slash before the lights. Thanks for listening to Before the Lights. I'm Tommy Canale. And until next time, everybody, a salute, a chin chin. <laughs>